Do you think that Michael Jordan would be as successful without you? No. In 2009, when Michael Jordan entered the Basketball Hall of Fame, the first person he mentioned and thanked was Scottie Pippen. You never just saw me, so Scottie Pippen. Next year, it was Michael who presented Scottie to the Hall of Fame. When Pippen worked on ESPN and had to do a LeBron versus Jordan comparison, Pippen said this. And there's no game that I would ever play in and pick LeBron James over Michael Jordan. But this was in 2018, when Scotty and Michael's relationship seemed like the happiest marriages. While Jordan was known to be a harsh teammate who bullied players and even punched Steve Kerr in the face, we never heard those kinds of stories about Scotty. And then came the pandemic, and the sporting world stopped. And he has just tweeted within the past two minutes that the NBA is suspending the season. Deprived of anything to cheer for, Netflix offered a 10-episode salvation for all sports fans. It was The Last Dance, a long-awaited documentary about the last season of the Bulls dynasty, with behind-the-scenes footage nobody had ever seen before. And when the documentary came out, that's when Scotty's and Michael Jordan's relationship started to change. See, The Last Dance wasn't really a basketball documentary. It was more like basketball was just a means to an end and where historic NBA events were used to tell a preset narrative. And that narrative was to glorify the cult of Michael Jordan and his place as the basketball goat. The Last Dance presented basketball in a way that can be understood by non-basketball fans and casuals. It was directed in a way that puts an individual over a team, which is not surprising, considering that director Jason Hare needed Jordan's approval to make the film, and that Jordan's presence in the film was conditioned by his control over the content. The Last Dance minimized the roles of Jordan's teammates, not properly explaining that MJ had by far the best supporting cast in the NBA. The documentary never mentioned that Steve Kerr was the most accurate three-point shooter of all time, that Horace Grant made four all-defensive teams, or that Tony Kukoc was the best European player and the most versatile power forward in the NBA. The doc barely mentioned a defensive ace Ron Harper, and they completely failed to say a single thing about center Luke Longley. Dennis Rodman got a lot of screen time, but much less as the best rebounder in NBA history and more of a party animal that Jordan needed to drag by the ears from Carmen Electra's hotel room. But the player who was most heard about the whole thing was Scottie Pippen, and it's not hard to see why. I had a ruptured tendon in my ankle, and I decided to have surgery late because I was like, you know what? I'm not going to my summer up trying to rehab for a season. Scotty Pippen of the Bulls will be out for two to three months. What Scotty was trying to do was trying to force management to change his contract. And Jerry wasn't going to do that. MJ called out Pippen as being selfish for delaying surgery. That season, Jordan was making $33 million, while Scotty was earning just $2.7 million. While the second episode of the documentary did center around Scotty and his unbelievably hard road to the NBA, in the end, the focus of the narrative quickly returned to MJ. And despite being so Jordan-centric, The Last Dance was a successful project because it achieved three goals. It managed to entertain and occupy the sports world in the biggest absence of sports since the 1860s. It served as a nostalgia for the people who lived through the Bulls dynasty, and it revitalized the interest in Jordan among the younger generations. If we look at the doc as an entertaining story for the masses, The Last Dance absolutely killed and knocked it out of the park. But in terms of explaining basketball nuances and strengthening relationships between the Bulls players, The Last Dance backfired completely. In May 2020, after the last episode aired, Jordan sent a rare text to Scottie Pippen. What's up, dude? I'm getting a word that you're upset with me. Love to talk about it if you have time. Pippen did call him back and explained his displeasure with how the rest of the Bulls were portrayed. When asked about it, Scotty backtracked a little bit. This documentary has not changed our relationship. We will be friends forever. I told Michael I wasn't too pleased with the last dance. He accepted it. He said, hey, you're right. That was pretty much it. But it wasn't it, and this comment aged badly really quickly. In 2021, Pippen started to unravel his feelings about Jordan, issuing a series of comments during the promotion of his autobiography titled Unguarded. Scotty told a story about how Jordan used to cheat him out of $100 during each Bulls game by bribing the staff to tell him who was going to win Jumbotron races. During a GQ interview, Pip accused Jordan of being selfish for leaving the Bulls to pursue a baseball career. What did you think when he said he was going to go play baseball? 
yeah, it was a, it was a big decision, but it was a it's a selfish decision, but it was kind of uh, who Michael Jordan was. Implying that he spent too much time grieving the death of his father. Scotty also downplayed Jordan's flu game, saying that he didn't receive any praise for playing the 1998 finals with a herniated disc. But the biggest criticism about Jordan the player was when Pippen said that the Bulls didn't win six rings because of MJ, and that they did it in spite of him. Seeing again how poorly Michael treated his teammates, I cringed, as I did back then. We didn't win six championships because he was tough with the guys. We won in spite of his bullying. We won because we played team basketball, which hadn't been the case my first two seasons when Doug Collins was our coach. In his book, Scotty also changed his perspective on the LeBron versus Jordan debate. I may go as far as to say Mike ruined basketball. In the 80s on the playgrounds, you'd have everyone moving the ball around, passing to help the team. That stopped in the 90s. Kids wanted to be like Mike. And Mike didn't want to pass, didn't want to rebound or defend the best player. He wanted everything done for him. That's why I always believed LeBron James was the greatest player this game has ever seen. He does everything and embodies what the game is truly about. The rest of the book was even more critical about Jordan and The Last Dance, saying that every episode was the same. Michael on a pedestal, his teammates secondary, referred to as his supporting cast. Michael could shoot six for 24 from the field, commit five turnovers, and he was still, in the minds of the adoring press and public, the errorless Jordan. Scotty was also pissed that Jordan received $10 million for his involvement in the documentary, while he and the rest of the Bulls got nothing. Pip wasn't done there, and he also unloaded on Phil Jackson during an interview with Dan Patrick. No, 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 I understand that, Scotty. I'm just going by what you said. You said you need to read between the fine lines. It was a racial move to give Tony Kukoc a ride. So, oh, I mean, if you knew that Scotty Pippen had been with the Bulls from 87, wouldn't you give Scotty Pippen one opportunity to get a last second shot without Michael Jordan? But if you talk to Phil about this, because you, by saying a racial move, then you're, you're calling Phil a racist. I don't got a problem with that. Scotty took shots at Charles Barkley, calling him not dedicated enough to win a title, and Isaiah Thomas, whom he called a dirty player. However, while we do agree that the last dance was overly centered on Jordan, and that there is a lot of truth in Pippen's words about the documentary, we can't escape the feeling that Scotty overreacted. In the doc, MJ still said there is no Jordan without Pippen. The last dance covered how underpaid Pippen was and his success as the leader of the Bulls without Jordan. Phil Jackson called Scotty the second best player in the league, and the doc mentioned Pippen guarding Magic in the 91 finals instead of Jordan, a key moment that turned the series around. So for Scotty to be going on this kind of media rampage, it just feels like a bit too much. We understand that it's hard to be the Robin to Jordan's Batman and live constantly in his shadow, and then relive that all over again in the documentary. But after the dust settled and all the insults had landed, it sounds like Pippen was just trying to say outlandish quotes to sell more copies of his book. And throughout all of Pippen's badmouthing, Jordan never said another word publicly. There was no statement, trash talking, or even acknowledging that Pippen suddenly turned into his biggest hater. It was only a sign that all the bridges were burnt and that their relationship was broken beyond repair. To add insult to injury, in 2022, MJ's son Marcus Jordan started dating Scotty's ex-wife, Larsa Pippen which certainly didn't feel good for her ex-husband. Wherever Scotty looked, Jordan was sticking it to a pippet, and it seems like his anger towards MJ will not stop anytime soon. 